Hello? Ah, totally. Everything working. So, yeah, the talk is about um, our cooperation uh, with GameLong. You guys, I guess, are aware of this one of the biggest and leading uh, publishers for mobile games on Android as well as on iOS. And uh, we wanted to use their newest title. Um, what they, I think they published it on uh, Android November last year, and we wanted to push the limits with our hardware that was in development, uh, and we wanted to use the title to put new effects in, and this talk is about what effects did we add, and how did we find the time needed to actually get these effects in. Uh, talking of we, so who is we? Um, I actually would like to virtually introduce you to the uh, Intel team that actually made, Intel and GameLog team that made this happen. So um, we were actually three main technical guys working on that. So the main part was uh, done by GameLog, which is Adrian. Um, and Steve is one of the Intel graphics guys who was mainly focusing on graphics. And then myself uh, also tied the other bits and pieces from a technology perspective together. So the three of us, we kind of work on this project mostly. Um, hopefully I can answer all the questions later, later on. Um, and yeah, let's just get it, get into the topic. So we as Intel wanted to push Matrix. Uh, and the things that we wanted to add to the uh, game was depth of field, because I think this emphasizes very much uh, the, the, vision, the visual effects of a, of a car. Light shafts, a really cool effect for uh, a real simulation of sunlight. Heat haze, bloom, improved particles, and as a, as a secondary goal, we wanted to see if we can get something going with NSAA. Um, we can choose right now. Do you want to see the effects now, real life and rendered, or do you want to see them after we talked about the implementation and find the time for it? So who is for now? Okay, so um, allow me some switching here. Okay, all right. So, uh, this is a live rendered image. It's a little dark though, too bad. Okay, let's just start it over. So basically, this, this is the game as you find it at the moment um, in the Google Play Store. Uh, this, this here is a specific version where we have a specific, uh, specific cheats enabled and the so-called attract mode where we can actually demo it, where we actually can demo it a little nicer. But in general, that's the same as, as you can find it in the, in the Google Play Store at the moment. So let me just enter quickly a race. Here for a second. So, looking at the light, uh, uh, at the light chat, uh, this is one of the features that is the most obvious. Um, so, you could see that there is that the, that the light is occluding here at the car. You can see the actual light rays when I move it, and in the normal. Uh, that is uh, pushed to the devices when you download it with the ARM device. Um, it actually only, it wouldn't show you anything, it shows you only lens flare effects, which are static effects at the end of the day. Um, something that is not so easily to show here at the moment, but in the screenshots later on much more, is bloom effect. So basically we added bloom to this. Um, another thing that we added is the um, MSAA. I don't know if this would be so visible in this picture here. So maybe that's just take a look at the, uh, at the edges. Um, we can actually switch it on on the fly. And it should be working. Let's see. Yeah. So when you look at the, at the rails that they added at the end, it's much smoother than before. And then we can switch it back off again. Uh, just do that. All right. So these were, these were these two effects. Uh, another effect that we added, and actually I had to start a race for that, this is in, all, in the beginning, when you start a race, it's the so-called heat haze. That means we added a distortion to the picture that um, simulates the flickering of, uh, of hot air. Uh, let's see if this works here. It's a very subtle effect in the, in the background. Let me just restart it again. So you, you need to look, look left 
the right to the car. It's, I think it's the most obvious. shows you how we did, how Gameloft implemented these, and uh, how we, as Intel, together with Gameloft, uh, found the time for doing so. Together that 
three passes should be fine enough to actually smooth out the, the race. Um, and to actually achieve this and keeping the overhead for mobile phones uh, low, uh, we used a really small render target uh, textures. Um, the entire three passes take about, take, take about 4.4 milliseconds. Then the radial blur, uh, here is the code how this was achieved. Um, you see the uh, position of the sun, then the radial blur direction and the offset. And then this is the code sample for the uh, fragment shader, where this previously uh, computed coordinates will be applied with the code output. At the end of the day, um, the uh, result is composed together, so the combination of the radial blur and the original blur color uh, are put together. And how, cost how costly is this entire feature? Uh, the first pass, 1.6 milliseconds, the second, 1.4, and the overall time needed was 8.4 milliseconds for uh, this entire effect, which is visible whenever there is a sign uh, visible. Coming to the bloom effect. Um, uh, when I showed the game to a lot of colleagues, uh, some loved it, others didn't like it because it was too soon, not realistic, uh, and uh, too surreal, but actually I think it draws, um, it's, it's a nice effect that you are aware of when you have any camera environment and you actually film something, so that actually this is an effect we as the team like very much, that's what we, we went forward implementing it. Um, so, how we did that, basically we took uh, two separate images that were composed together. One is the original image and one is an image where you only have the, uh, well, white or very bright uh, areas emphasized. Um, how did we do that? So there was a, uh, there was an equation that I actually think I showed the next one, yeah. So we used a high pass filter to actually get all the very bright parts of the picture, uh, of the actual picture out. And then we applied a uh, horizontal as well as a vertical blur to, uh, to this mask. And at the end of the day, these two, um, so your normal, ren your normal rendered picture as well as the um, blurred output were put together. And the final is your image with a blooming effect. How much time did this one need? Um, overall, the bright pass filter took some time, and the final composed took most of the time. So we were looking at a 4.8 millisecond um, for only for this effect. Okay. So how much additional time did we need? Um, and uh, I don't know if you calculate with me, but when we did the overall, uh, when we tested the game out at the beginning, um, so, oh, maybe I should start differently. Um, what did we want to achieve? So, when you look at what consumers want, we want to render in a native resolution for sure, uh, because you have less art less artifacts, it just looks much nicer. Um, so actually we would like to have the 100% resolution because even if we don't, can use MS-880 because it's too expensive, we still would have quite okay edges. Um, and we would like to have surely our new features implemented that would separate this platform from our competition. Um, so what did we look at at the beginning? So the game was originally running at uh, 50, 50 frames per second, or 55 frames per second. So that took us on average, let's say approximately 18 milliseconds time for each frame. Um, but back in the days, the game was only rendering at 50% resolution. Okay, that's a that's low, that's low. And there were no no features implemented. So we actually needed to find some time to actually do that. What was even more complicating this entire topic is the fact that we had back in the days alpha hardware. Alpha OS and a game that was running on our production devices quite well. So our systems changed, uh, our Android drivers changed on a, on a weekly basis. Uh, who of you guys have, have ever worked with Vita, Vita Android OS as well as hardware? Okay, there is one or two. Um, so I don't need to tell you guys that it's uh, sometimes a little 
a little awkward to work with these. Um, in that case, maybe a little, little side note how, how we cope with that. So basically, Gameloft got internal images for, for Android for this hardware and read from us, uh, but without Google Play services, for instance. Um, so whatever, what, what they needed to do is they needed to sideload the Google Play services. It took them a long time to actually only do, go through this process of installing the updates, um, the relay, the relay crash. Um, so it took us a very, very long time not being able to judge the quality of the system early. So we didn't actually know how much time we would need uh, to find in the actual game to actually implement what we wanted to implement. So that was, that was pretty hard to, get, to guess at, uh, at this point. Um, we knew that, uh, for instance, slide chats would approximately take, we, we estimated with 10 milliseconds because back in the days we didn't know how much it would be. Um, the bloom, we actually even thought it would be a little bit more. The heat haze, we kind of uh, didn't really take into consideration uh, because it would be only in effect at the beginning. Um, the improved particles, they don't take too much, so that's why we kind of discarded them as well. And the MSAA was something, uh, something optional. So if you add everything on top, um, you see that um, even with the, with the heat haze, but it would work these four milliseconds, we would be below our target that we wanted to have. Still, we would render in a 50% resolution, so that, that was the trade-off. Um, and not to speak of MSAA or any other features. Um, so how, what did we do? Intel has a tool called GPA, uh, graphics, graphic, uh, graphics Performance Analyzer. Anyone knows the tool already and uses it? You like it? Okay. Um, so, what, so what GPA and GPA is doing? Um, it, GPA is basically, is actually a suite consisting of a lot of tools. Um, so it has a power, uh, no, uh, platform analyzer as well as uh, system, and, uh, system analyzer. Whatever you start out with, uh, you have your x86 ready device, or you have your x86 device, we you have your application running, um, and you can get all the all kind of metrics loaded into, uh, into the program, um, and then you see if your game is GPU bound or CPU bound. Um, apparently we were looking at this, at this kind of application in, in a game, so we actually saw that, uh, sure, it's a GPU bound game because it's a, it's a graphic intense game. So that's why it was pretty obvious that we move on with uh, frame analyzer uh, to actually do the actual checking. Um, to get this stuff done, uh, it's very easy in GPA. You can output all your information uh, into uh, Excel files and then do the, let, let Excel do that for you or any other uh, calculation program. And um, we saw that clearly, okay, frame analyzer. Then when you open up GPA uh, or Frame Analyzer and you take a frame from the device, everything working through, a, uh, through ADB, uh, then we have seen these purple big curves. Uh, so it's like, okay, what are these? So they take a lot of time. Uh, so they take approximately five million seconds of time. So what is this actually? So what we find out is, okay, we were rendering back in the days. We didn't, we didn't have the nice eight-inch device. We had a, we had a ten-inch device with a, I think 2,560 uh, resolution. So actually pretty big. Um, so we found out that they are render target years, and they are actually getting so expensive um, because of the screen size or of the, of the resolution of the device. So that they were actually not needed. So what we found that was a really easy find. Uh, Needed to remove these uh, unnecessary calls, and we actually had our first five milliseconds worth of uh, time that we could need for other things. So what we actually did to, to get this done: uh, so you load, you have your game running, uh, you start frame analyzer, you just frame down the frame to, uh, to uh, from the system analyzer, and open it up. Frame analyzer, everything works automatically. Uh, you clear the calls. So that your calls show up pretty easily on the and pretty big, and then you look up if this is actually stuff that you would like to take action on or not. And another big one, the yellow earth that you can see here. That's actually something we would have never guessed in the beginning. Um, but that was the upscaling. So remember, our game was running at. Uh, 
50% resolution. But these, I think it was even three milliseconds of time was only coming in from upscaling. So we thought, okay, why don't we just give it a try and render it natively? So what's the, what's the game? What's the, what does it bring us? At the end of the day, what it brought us, it didn't speed up the game, but we could render the game in a native resolution and we didn't lose any time. So actually it was pretty easy to change from upscaling to not, to not upscaling and rendering natively without losing anything, but also with not gaining any time, but still we had much more visual quality at the end of the day. But also you see, then you could say, well, there are other big things like A, B, C, and D. Maybe we can get rid of these as well and save more time. Um, but remember we were dealing with a car game and actually these were cars. So actually you don't you don't actually want to mess with the cars in the car game because actually you need the cars to look pretty in order to call your game a car game. So that's why okay, A, B, C, and D, they're not really expensive, but take up some time, but still they need to be there, so sure, they can be there. So that's why we left these without any modification and just went on. Then we looked at, uh, yeah, I was talking before about the blur pass that we were doing. Then we were doing them in uh, one quarter of the resolution. Uh, originally, GameWorks was doing them on, on uh, half of the resolution, and it was taking very much time. Uh, so that's why that's the same thing. So we looked at B and C, and we could see that these blur passes take very much time. Um, as these were blur passes and you blur an image anyway, it doesn't need to be a, a full size or even a half size resolution. So we, so we check if the quality would be still there if we are using quarter of the size just to get down the time. And actually it was working. Um, the visual, the visual uh, quality that we were losing was not that much. So you sure you lose a little bit, but not that much. Uh, but it actually, it actually saved us two to three milliseconds of time, of worth of time, which at the end of the day um, resulted in more effects than we could do that. Another really interesting thing, um, but also which shows the good, uh, shows really nicely the um, the features of GPA is I don't know if this is visible in this slide deck. There is a little difference in the picture, as you might see. So this is the picture, what we saw when every, in every test build that we got from Game of And this is the actual picture that we are seeing at the moment. Um, so we were getting these builds nearly once a week, and there were changes to the drivers, changes to the OS, um, every week. And you don't even look for stuff like, is it looking good, or is, it, is there any changes? You simply lose to look for the overall picture. So you lose yourself in the game, so to say. So we were looking, oh, okay, is the performance right? Is this right? Is this right? Is this right? And then we were, I think, in the beta stage, where we actually said, okay, let's open up a little bit for the audience, and uh, we found people inside of the company that uh, did some testing for us. And there was one guy come to me after 10 minutes, like, um, I downloaded it from the store. It looks much better on the store. So I was like, play over. It was like, shit, I just wasted half a year. Um, what we totally missed out is that some of their algorithms for, um, I, think it was the, I think it was the blue, they had a really, really sophisticated um, blue code. Um, and Steve was actually mentioning that and he, he was playing with it because we, we were like, well, that was a half year of time and our colleagues tell us, well, I, I, I better play the version that's on the store rather than the version that we were working on. Um, so, he was finding out that actually there, was, there must have been something wrong with the, um, with the code for the boot and he tested out in GPA, so everything was prototyped in GPA because we did not have any code base from GameLog. So all the entire code base was with GameLog, we didn't even touch that code. Um, and so he prototyped in GPA um, and everything and could send back the picture to the device to look at the picture on the device, how it looked, how it looked with different uh, different math in the background. And this is how we prototyped it. We internally prototyped it, sent it 
them off the game board and said, like, hey guys, why don't we implement it like this? And uh, so that also my colleague is happy and doesn't need to download this version of the store and you can stay with our versions that we implemented internally. And uh, yeah, so that's how we actually get rid of this wash out effect that we could see in the beginning. So, to sum it up for, the, for how much time was needed. At the end of the day, we got everything in. Uh, so we found the 5 milliseconds of render target here. We found 3 milliseconds of reducing uh, the blurry uh, render targets from full resolution to one quarter of it, or from half resolution to one, uh, one quarter of the resolution. We changed from 50% uh, rendering to 100% uh, rendering uh, target size uh, for cost equivalent, so no gain, no, no loss. And the game is now running at approximately 43 frames per second and um, takes about 20, 23 to 24 milliseconds per frame. All the, part, uh, all the uh, features in, actually, we were pretty happy. So the second step was, okay, we would like to implement MSAA as well. Uh, MSAA is something pretty expensive uh, and we have it inside but we decided not to turn it on because it's a effect that costs us a lot of milliseconds, I think yeah, 70 milliseconds to so be render only at 25 uh, FPS still which would be acceptable but by default uh, it's on the game so like if you choose to, to use it it's there but you have to turn it on manually like I showed in the beginning uh, because we would like to have the best user experience or game of and thus we want to have the best user experience for the user that's why we turn it off by default but if someone wants to use MSA he certainly can do that uh, still you would it would be critical to call it really smooth because 25 is so it's, it's, it's on the edge. Um, which brings me to another one. Uh, 43 FPS, what can I do with that? Uh, we are talking about mobile devices. So what's your thing that you do every night to your mobile devices? You need to charge them. When you play a game, you don't need to, you need to charge them every hour or every one and a half hours, depending on the game, depending on what you're doing. So actually we're thinking about, okay, maybe we don't need 40, 43 frames per second. So that's actually a, a trade-off you as the developers need to do. Um, what do I want? I mean, sure you want visual quality, that's fine. Uh, but you also uh, want good battery life because it's a mobile device. It's not like, when I recall the times when I was living back home with my parents and the electricity came out of the on the wall. Um, that's my, uh, my parents have paid the bill. Right now I pay it when I have my device and I could not work anymore or I cannot call anymore because my battery is empty. So that's why we have the uh, limitation here. And it's like, okay, let's see what we can gain when we have 30, uh, when we limit it at 30 uh, frames per second. And actually it was significant. Um, so that's the same thing we measured with GPA. We measured the current power discharge from the from system analyzer. Um, we loaded everything into Excel, made a graph, and it was pretty obvious that we could save up to one third of power usage by frame clamping everything to uh, to 30 bit, uh, to 30 FPS. That means you have one third more of battery life when you're playing the game, or you can play one third of the time over, depending on how you want to see it at the end of the day. So, one other thing that I don't want to go into details. Um, so these were the effects that we implemented and how we found the time for that, but still it's something that you need to add if you compile natively or if you work natively uh, with the ADK. Um, it's not very much different from uh, Mark version 7. Uh, but there are some things that you should pay attention to or yeah, you need to be aware of. Um, I just wanted to have it on here to have it condensed on one slide, I, but I don't actually want to talk about it because there is a talk from my colleagues Alexander and uh, Xavier, I think it's at five, uh, that will talk about the differences in, uh, in length. Yeah, it's at 5.30. Uh, and they will, they will talk about x86 as well as 64-bit uh, platforms and what is the difference at the end of the day is how to uh, optimize for these or how to get the best out of your NDK 
Uh, looking for graphic games. You definitely need to be, be aware if you want to put games or if you want to put new effects in, you need to account 50% of things you need to find in order to apply the effect that costs you 5 milliseconds. That's definitely something you need to take into consideration. And profiling the application with GPA for Intel devices or other profiling tools for uh, ARC devices is definitely something you need to do in order to get your um, to your new features in. And even game dog is one of the biggest publishers worldwide. Uh, we could even find some stuff. So I guess there is room for improvement out there for, I guess, nearly every application. Another thing, but I think that's it, I guess. Yeah. I think that's it from my side, and I will open it up for questions, and otherwise uh, you can go with our Andy back down to the booth and check out the devices. Thank you. Any questions? Who's there? This guy's got a question. No, he got to tell us something. Who has a question? Online um, shows we were 
work with it. But it's, it's always depending on the test. Uh, and on your question that we changed from how we are to uh, Intel architecture, that's correct, for tablets. For smartphones, we stay so far with how we are. So our Global Plus platform uh, has a how we are 540, 44, and 54. And the Mary field that we have downstairs has actually uh, generation 6 how we are inside. Future, we are not. Thank you. Thank you.